So the reason that I went solar is for a couple of reasons. I'm a earth scientist, I'm a geologist, and I'm fully aware of the impacts of human activity on climate and on climate change and the whole system of power generation that we have in this country. The reason I went solar was to have my small piece of impact on trying to reduce carbon emissions. The factors that I uh, used to choose a solar company was I wanted somebody local. I wanted to work with people, ideally, that I'd worked with before. I wanted a company that uh, had a good environmental ethic. They need to not just be in the business of doing solar because it's profitable right now and there's lots of people doing it. They have to have a track record of caring about the environment and, and engaging with the community uh, in environmental issues. Those are sort of the considerations. Obviously, you know, I shopped around and I got uh, quotes for from a couple of different solar vendors, but in the end, uh, balancing all these things uh, went with the choice that I did. My advice for potential solar buyers is to just go ahead and do it. <laughs> uh, now's the right time. You know, everything is lined up correctly. The costs are there. Uh, the payback is uh, reasonable. You should obviously shop around. There's a number of places out there. My preference is to go local. There are a lot of these uh, big national companies that you can simply do a search on the web and find them and you can get a quote. I looked at a, uh, three different local vendors and, uh, and then just compared their offerings. I had them come out and look at the site and, and, and walk through the whole process from sizing the system hooking it up to the utility, dealing with the financing and so on. The things that I learned that were uh, unexpected was actually how painless it can be. We were having a garage built at the same time and having the solar installed on the roof of the garage. The process I thought would be uh, a nightmare, doing the construction, having these two people talk to each other, COVID came right in the middle of all of this. We were actually supposed to do all the work in March and April, uh, which is right when the state shut down all this work. And as soon as things started to reopen again, people started coming back. And I really thought that there would be a lot more problems, but it ended up being extraordinarily painless. And that was a huge and welcome surprise. <laughs> so we have a, both a ground mount system, which is on these pillars in the field. And then in addition to that, we have an array that goes up on the roof. And the reason we decided to go ahead and do it that way was originally we were thinking of just having a single array, but the size that we wanted, which is something a little bit larger than 11 kilowatts, wouldn't fit on the roof. As it turns out, because we were having a, a garage built at the same time, some of the costs of the garage actually factor towards the cost of the solar system. And so you would get uh, this uh, tax uh, you know, advantage that one gets to the federal, I think at this point it's 27%. Some of that applies to the cost of the garage, or I should say that tax applies to some of the cost of the garage. And if you were to put it on the ground, then you would also get an advantage, but it, in the end, it turned out to be more advantageous to put it on the garage. And it just looks way cool. The reason that we went with putting the solar array on the garage rather than the house uh, is our house is quite tall. It's uh, two stories with an attic on top. And so every piece of work would involve cherry pickers and huge ladders and this and that. So our preference was to either just have a ground mount or a ground mount and a garage mount. The garage is a metal roof, so there's no aging issues associated with that the way you would have with shingles or something like that. It is entirely invisible for the most part, and I like it that way. So the way to look at this is you're changing the electricity generation system. As you decentralize it, as more and more people are doing this, the incentive for creating large fossil fuel 
uh, power plants the, or, or the, the cost benefit for these large fo fossil fuel uh, power plants will start to get uh, more unfavorable. We are grid connected, so we don't have a battery system. So we're entirely dependent on the health of the grid. So uh, of the electric power generation and well of the electric power distribution grid. Uh, plus we don't generate all of our power ourselves. The, the way that I think this is most advantageous is hopefully during peak power use times in the summer uh, when everybody has their air conditioning on and, and, and all the offices. If there are lots and lots of solar systems out there they're providing to the grid and, and you're less likely to see these rolling blackouts, for example, that, that we've seen in California over the years and, and in the Northeast at times. Uh, so hopefully by doing that, if there's enough people providing uh, a little bit of uh, add-on power, whether that's enough, whether it comes at the right times when there's peak power demand is really a roll of the dice, but it, it certainly doesn't hurt. We live out in the country and so for us, uh, uh, the challenges were actually quite uh, easy to manage. We have lots and lots of space to put a ground system, to put uh, a roof system. Uh, all the big trucks could, renew, could maneuver in there without any trouble. We had to dig a trench to get the, elect uh, the electric line connected up. It was a daunting prospect to, to start with, but it actually turned out to be quite easy. Uh, the only advice I would have is uh, think long and hard early about all the things you would like to have uh, because you're not going to want to do it a second time. So <laughs> get it right the first time.